Right, President Uhuru Kenyatta has today launched uh, the Standard Gauge Railway passenger train service at Meritini Station in Mombasa. The train is expected to ferry at least 1,200 passengers daily for 700 shillings a pop. Now, Uhuru declared that vandalism would not be tolerated and that destruction amounts to economic sabotage, which is a capital offence for the punishment in Kenya, which the offence is hanging in Kenya. Wale ambao watahukumiwa kwa sababu ya kuharibu mali ya wa Kenya kuharibu haki ya watoto na watoto wa watoto wetu nasema Mungu nisamehe lakini hawa ambao watahukumiwa nitaweka kidole wanyongwe Right, welcome to the show. Before I start, let me just introduce my guest. Sitting right next to me is Dr. Nelly Bosire, former chairperson of the Nairobi chapter of KMPDU. And of course, right next to her is Danish Odongo, who is a political commentator. We're also expecting Ramadan Rajab, who is a journalist at the Star. A bit caught up in traffic tonight, but we're expecting him shortly. So, gentlemen and lady, today, a historic day. Um, <laughs> by all accounts in Kenya, because it's been 100 years since the Lunatic Express. Mm. And now we have the SDR. I'll start with you, Danish. Um, what, what, what do you pretend to be the impact of this massive infrastructure? Um, I think, first of all, it, it kind of shows that, as a people, we have the opportunity and we have the potential to actually chart our own path and chart our own destinies. And uh, us launching the SGR, the biggest infrastructural project in East and Central Africa, mm -hmm. actually is a step in the right direction. I'm, I'm only hoping that the benefit will start to trickle in soon and we can see the change in the entire landscape where the SGR has been built. I'm extremely proud today to be a Kenyan. All right. Salute, Mr. President, the entire Jubilee government. Uh, interesting that you say that because <laughs> we've been complaining about this thing um, since it was uh, the idea was mentioned, Dr. Nelly. And then, of course, today Uhuru is saying that um, economic sabotage is a capital offence. That's a new one. I, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Well, I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but I, I think in Kenya, capital offenses are very, very clear, and, and yes. we know that they're very, very few. But uh, ultimately, what, what I think what he was trying to put across is that this is a grave offense, mm -hmm. which all of us should agree upon. Like, really, even if you don't really think that this SGR is a very good idea, if you just think about the kind of loan as an individual you're carrying towards it, right. you definitely do not want to interfere with it. Right. You've already invested too much, whether yes. you wanted to or not. You have invested so much in it, mm -hmm. the least you could do is protect it. It's the best you could do. Well, I agree with you, 100%. Mm -hmm. It's cost <laughs> us three, almost 400 billion shillings. Yes. It must be protected at all costs. Mm -hmm. But then economic sabotage is not a capital offense in Kenya. <laughs> so they've actually invented a new crime and are threatening. People have already been arrested, remember. <laughs> so should they go ahead and hang them? Um, I, I think it's, it's typical of, of politicians to make um, warnings. But that, the, I thank God that we have got you know, separation of powers and there's a judiciary and there's the, the legislature and then we have the executive. Mm -hmm. So some of the executive pronouncement might not be really legally binding, mm -hmm. but it's good to make them for political ramifications because I think maybe in their mind they thought that the people who were actually vandalizing or who are alleged to have vandalized the SGR were from you know, another side of the political divide. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I want to agree with Dr. Bosiri that Kenyans must at all come together and support the SGR. Mm -hmm. Not because we loved it, not because of all these things. It is already here. Mm -hmm. We're going to pay this loan. Um, each child born in this country, we're going to have 68,000 Kenyan shillings mm -hmm. loan on their head. Mm -hmm. The least we can do is support the government. Mm -hmm. It might be a white elephant project, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. 700 shillings is a brilliant way to go to Mombasa, four hours. It's brilliant, the cargo and all the benefits that accrue to it, the best thing we can do, support the government. Yes, oh, I agree as well, Danish. Mm -hmm. But don't you think, Dr. Nelly, mm -hmm. that we accept all manner of uh, malpractices in the name <laughs> of the end justifies the means? doesn't matter what happened before. Now we have a train. Now prices are half. Uh, they're being cut in half. Mm -hmm. It's taking half the time to get to Mombasa. Should we just accept and move on because now we have a train? Um, I think what we really want to do is separate the issues, okay? Yes. Uh, in terms of looking at it as an investment in this country, mm -hmm. would we then be, would we be less happy uh, would we be less be, would we be less unhappy if we didn't feel like we have been extorted into getting this mm -hmm. maybe you know maybe because the argument has just been that it's not i don't think we have um we, we've been against 
the service itself that has been put up or the infrastructure, mm -hmm. our challenge has been why did we have to spend so, so much mm -hmm. when we think or we have been shown that there could be cheaper alternatives yeah. to achieving the same. Yeah. So in terms of looking at it as infrastructure that our country has gained, mm -hmm. then we really have to agree that well, it's a step forward. Mm -hmm. But in terms of looking at uh, do we think that uh, financially there have been things that are not correct mm -hmm. that we must not forget? Okay, and if absolutely. we're able to then do a proper audit mm -hmm. and then with what we find, then work with that. Mm -hmm. Our challenge, what you're saying is, it's not that we, we, we don't, what we do is that we move on and then we forget mm -hmm. about the past. Mm -hmm. We need to analyze that past and deal with it so that then we can move forward. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely agree with her. And if by any chance there's a regime change on the August of 8th. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 8th of August. 8th mm -hmm. of August, rather. <laughs> and uh, the people who put pen to paper on this SGR transaction mm -hmm. are found to have stolen the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether SGR is a God-sent heaven mm -hmm. thing that's supposed to help us. Mm -hmm. If they stole money, they must be put behind bars and they must pay for the crimes that they did to the people of Kenya. And I wish that the president had actually pronounced that there cannot be a death penalty for a couple of <laughs> offenses when the NYS money was looted. Mm. For mm -hmm. corruption. For corruption. Yes. That is, we are losing according to... Because it is the, the same exact thing. Yes. It's economic sabotage. Mm. According you know. to the, the former Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, mm. he said last year, speaking to Reuters, that we lose a third of our budget a year. We're talking about 600 billion Kenyan shillings that we lose to corruption mm. every single year. Mm -hmm. So all this is a charade and it's good that we are actually giving pronouncement in Mombasa because SGR is something that's very close to the president's heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he needs to know that Kenyans, what is very close to our heart is the fact that our money that we are giving, I pay, pay, it's very painful when I look at my personal report I give my government mm -hmm. and then I see people walking away with cash in sacks. Mm -hmm. It is painful. Those are the people who deserve to be hung, not yesterday, mm -hmm. not but the days before. Okay. Yes. Do you agree, Dr. Nelly? Harsh um, punishment for corruption because it's yes. also an economic crime. You know, um, it doesn't matter. The, the, the ramifications of the economic crime mm -hmm. are equivalent really to a death mm -hmm. penalty because mm -hmm. when you're stealing money from health, from transport, from what have you, and, and then the putting people's lives at risk, mm -hmm. when people die, we know that if you're going to kill someone, it's a capital mm -hmm. offense and you're going to hang for it. Right. So we should apply the same, you know, whip across board. Thank Indeed, you. but staying with matters SGR, now the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, has today said that the Madaraka Express was a good development project. Speaking in Nakuru, Raila said that the SGR was a grand coalition in initiative. He was also quick to support President Kenyatta on the vandalism of the SGR line. You know, it's a grand coalition government project. How can I oppose it? I've never been opposed to it. It was, we conceived it uh, as a part of the Vision 2030 uh, project and uh, it was designed in our time. It was tendered in our time. We awarded the tender by the, the time we were leaving the office. All that the Jubilee did was to cancel the tender, retender it again, and award it back to the same contractor at a grossly inflated price. That's all that we've been talking about. So it is not something that we oppose. <laughs> Manaki, he really to say you Kenya, Tena I may jengua, just you are Kenya. A Kenyan, you have a compassion, Pesa, Kujenga, he really. Kahibo, Mimi, Nukabalin, and Rice, Yakwamba, Mutamba, and Jeribu, Kwaribu, really, uh, Shukulu, Atua, Lakini, Yakisharia. So Raila there agreeing and then disagreeing and then agreeing. <laughs> kind of, it's kind of a weird case of sour grapes and also wanting to take credit for the SGR but not wanting to take uh, uh, responsibility for the failures. Uh, do you think it's a case of um, it was my idea, therefore you, sh you should not take any credit for it? But I think factually speaking, as a journalist, I, I really stick to fact. The fact that an, a, a, a feasibility study was done in the Grand Coalition time. Mm -hmm. Actually, groundbreaking was done in the coalition time in 2012 when Francis Kimemia was actually pushing the, the civil servants to actually go and launch this project. Just that it did not happen then. But under the Vision 2030, one of the pillars in economic development, one of it is the standard gauge railway. There's nothing absolutely wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But I agree with him that the, the bone of contention hasn't been that Kenya actually needs a better railway system. It's been, did we tender it right? Mm -hmm. Are we mortgaging our country, the future of our children, by tying a hangman's noose in terms of debt 
on their necks. Mm -hmm. That has been the problem, and I think those questions will still continue to be asked mm -hmm. as we are about to take it all the way to Malaba border. If we stop asking those questions and we begin to um, uh, paint it all rosy, we, will, we might forget that actually money was lost or allegedly lost, mm -hmm. and people need to come to clean and tell us that over 300 um, 27 billion that was spent. How mm -hmm. much did individuals pocket? Mm -hmm. And do they need to pay for that? Because mm -hmm. we cannot again spend a lot of money taking it from uh, you know, Nairobi all the way to Malaba in a country that 40% of us still live below a dollar a day. In a country mm -hmm. that malaria still is a leading killer. In a country that antiretroviral therapy is a matter that we leave it to people, donor, the donor agencies. Mm -hmm. We cannot accept wastage of funds. That's true. And another mm -hmm. bone of contention actually is the fact that the World Bank actually did a report saying that all we needed to do was upgrade our single gauge railway. Mm -hmm. We didn't need to spend 300 billion on a, on a double, on a standard gauge one. That's another issue where it seems that money, maybe money was just flowing and people just had to mm -hmm. find a use for it. Mm -hmm. But another point that Raila makes is that um, he agrees with the president about the vandalism. Mm -hmm. So should we be taking this vandalism super seriously or should we be focusing on like robbery with violence, um, <laughs> murder, similar capital crimes? I think he was very categorical at the end where he said that I agree with him, mm -hmm. but this thing should be done by the law, by the book, you know. If you're going to commit a crime, you expect to face the law. It's not that one crime should be bigger than the other, and if we're talking about vandalism now, that then we are diminishing the other crimes. Uh, we don't want this to become a habit. Mm -hmm. We yes. have known that every time we have political issues and what have you, we have seen the Kibera railway just being plucked up mm -hmm. for fun. Mm. This cannot be allowed to happen. Yes. Well, we need to move beyond that. Yes. Kenyans need to develop emotional maturity to handle their grievances in a way that you do not wake up and destroy where you eat from. Mm -hmm. You're not going to start destroying what we've invested so much money in mm -hmm. to express yourself. Mm -hmm. We have options. Yes. So for me, I feel like uh, let them talk about it. It's a good thing. Whoever they are addressing, they know who they are addressing. And that's a good thing. Let them address them and address them categorically that this should not be acceptable. Mm -hmm. But we know that if you're going to go to court, the process of the law, as I said, there's a very clear separation of powers and there are crimes you'll be charged for. Right. So I, I'm not worried about that. Actually, the DPP mm -hmm. chimed in as well and also mm -hmm. said that if, the, if evidence allows, they will charge people with a capital offense for economic sabotage. Mm -hmm. But just to be clear, there is a crime called sabotage. Mm -hmm. And the harshest punishment for that is... Um, uh, life imprisonment. Mm -hmm. It's not actually a capital offense. Um, but right now, we're happy to be joined by Ramadan Rajab, who is a journalist at the Star newspaper. Welcome, Ramadan. I'm sorry about the traffic. You know, Mombasa Road can be a bit crazy. <laughs> today, especially, with yeah, the today. launch of the SGR. Right, so now that you've joined us, what are your thoughts on, on the SGR? The SGR generally <laughs> smells of colonization. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we, don't have, we, we, we haven't gotten value for money in this investment. I hear excitement, people calling at Relia Kisasa. This is not Relia Kisasa. It's not a modern train. This is a diesel engine train, <laughs> whereas the entire world is moving to electric train. But it's better than what we had price. before. No, yeah. it, saying that it's better than what we had before, it doesn't, doesn't mean that we got value for this money. This is just, I think, a dubious. <laughs> claim of, uh, uh, of, of success to Jubilee. Yeah. But uh, personally, I think we didn't get value for money. Uh, but okay, there's, there's two different things. There's value for money, there's yes. value for 300 plus billion shillings, and yes. there's also an infrastructural pro uh, project mm -hmm. that is really going to open up our country for trade. It's going to make traffic jams mass, much less bearable. Um, mm. It's going to really change the face of this country in terms of economics and the amount of money that's wasted by people because of a, lacking, a, a lagging transport system. So isn't it a good thing? It isn't. It isn't a good thing. For any <laughs> investor, he should be able to tell you how much will we recoup from this investment. Currently, we are investing in a, uh, in a project which even the proponents can't tell you how much or how long will we recoup the investment from this in, uh, uh, SGR. At the moment, Countries like Sri Lanka have built such, such infrastructure projects, but they are unable to pay even the loans. Mm -hmm. And they are saying now let's do the equity or swap, 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 give you the airport, which China is not willing to do. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is just a white elephant pro, uh, 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 well, project. I, 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 I want to disagree yeah, with them. I, a bit. Yeah, I, was going to disagree I, I really, well. really want to disagree with them. <laughs> All right, there are a bit of accountability questions and matters of cost vis a vis 
were we really willing to, you know, are we, are we able to actually buy it, living within our means? But the fact that it's going to cut the number of times, the number of hours we take to Mombasa. That's a lie. Cargo, the number that's of times. That's a lie. How that's is it a big lie, lie that's going to Mombasa? Hours. It's not four and a half hours. They're too interesting. Ask those guys who travel with that train today and how much it will cost a passenger to travel to Mombasa. You need a thousand bob to go to Siokimau from the CBD. You need another thousand bob from Ritini to go to the CBD of Mombasa. So what does, what type of... You don't think they're going to have shuttle buses that are affordable? So, like sorry, me. gentlemen, before free. we, we this... shuttle to the next topic, mm -hmm. let's carry on with this. And today, Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho was today bar barred from attending a presidential function. The Miritini inaugural SGR train flag off to Nairobi. Joho Affairs critic of Uhuru has accused him of sidelining the coast region in his development plans and allegedly relaunching the same projects to hoodwink the voters. This is the second time the governor has been barred by the police from attending a presidential function. What gives? A big number of people that come to Mombasa do so because of the port being here. So we want the Jubilee government to come out very clear why is it that they had to get KPA? If there was a loan that needed to be guaranteed, the project is being undertaken by Kenya Railway. Where is the involvement of Kenya Ports Authority? Why force Kenya Ports Authority to sign a guarantee? Why do you create a threshold of a certain number of consignment that must be moved by railway? Why do you tell then KPA if they do not meet the threshold then they'll be forced to pay the loan. So the port continues to be a point of conflict between uh, President Kenyatta and um, Governor Ali Hassan Joho. Um, but then we'll talk about that. But this business of Joho trying to invite himself for state functions and being bad, I, aren't you getting a bit bored of it, Dr. Nelly? <laughs> Isn't there a, a different way uh, to protest? You know, I, I, I just fail to understand what is happening in the, in the president's camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't keep doing this. Every time you do this, you're just giving the guy mileage that he didn't work for. Mm -hmm. We've said this before, we've said it again. Let him come. Mm -hmm. And in African culture, it's African culture. I don't come to your house, sit in your living room and eat, and I don't say hello to you, and you're there. But isn't it Even also when African you're, culture that when you're, you're not invited the first time, do you go back a second time? But you are, not, you are in my space. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are in my space. Even when I come to your house and I think your husband is obnoxious, I have to put up with him and say, <laughs> Hello, sir. He's the head of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that space, let him come. He would probably do not as much harm as you think if you don't give him uh, attention by creating this whole hula baloo that you barred him. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you bar him, he goes, he holds a press conference there. He has all the time and the microphone to himself to say exactly what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. And then he's still given um, audience by the press. We see him on TV. And it beats the purpose. What are your thoughts, Danny? Um, I, I think um, Joho is a brilliant politician, but I think this tactic is now old, completely old, <laughs> must be discarded. A person tends to change with time as time goes by because the soundbite work has already been won by the president because today people are talking about the SGR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that he's saying, nobody will actually put it on news as, 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 as anything important. Well, apart from us, clearly. Yeah, apart from <laughs> you guys. Yes, but if you look at the overall return on investment, if I were to be a politician, I'd calculate and say, you know what, by the way, yesterday, Eric Kirai, the, 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 the spokesman, said that he's invited, but as long as he follows the protocol. Mm. So yesterday, it looked like there was a kind of goodwill. But today, I mean, trying to move in there while you know you're not sometimes accepted. I think I think my, my opinion as a person who is a political observer and also a communicator, I absolutely think that that trick is old, mm -hmm. it's tired, and it's, it's likely to backfire on him now as we move to the next election. Ramadan? I think he's speaking to his people in Mombasa mm -hmm. who feel this SGR project will continue to marginalize them economically. Mm -hmm. you, there is an idea of the dry pot in Iwasha. That's the bone of contention. That's what people forget about when they're speaking about this SGR. Mm -hmm. There is a plan to move the port, the clearing, and everything else to Naivasha. And that's what he's protesting about. Mm -hmm. So when he speaks uh, and is barred from going to these rallies or this opening or, or these functions, it means people from Mombasa are being isolated. So they are not part of this project. Mm -hmm. And it means that taxpayers, yes, their money is being used to build this project, but they're being barred. Mm -hmm. So that narrative of historical injustices continues to cement in the mind of the people. What about the allegations about the Kenya Ports Authority and the fact that they were made a guarantor of the SGR loan? He's trying to say without their consent. 
and therefore they have to channel freight onto the SGR so they can make their quarter of their payment uh, to repay the loan. Is there any substance to that? But even uh, if you, you, you talk to the uh, guys who run the trailer business, the, they'll tell you they're under immense pressure mm -hmm. to make sure that they, all the containers are on the SGR. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're forcing even the business community to accept this project. Mm -hmm which maybe they don't which, see which the value. Which might make it. economic sense for the country because um, it was very expensive. Absolutely agree. But just yeah. touching on what Rajab was saying, um, Joho is beyond the Mombasa politics right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. He's a person who can appeal in Nyanza, he can appeal in Nairobi, he can appeal in Northeastern. And I think as he tries to craft a, a strategy to move beyond being a governor to being a presidential contender, he needs to think of the secondary audience. The primary audience could be understanding the marginalization and, you know, victim mentality and all that kind of stuff, that is all right. But at the but moment, it's the governor of Nairobi, of Mombasa. Uh, no, I'm just saying, I'm <laughs> thinking about, you know, as a, as a politician, it was that a slip of the time? Short term, <laughs> medium term, and long term. And uh, for me, as a person who observes politics, I think politicians who have actually been successful mm -hmm. who are very intentional now they speak. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might speak right now to appeal to the primary audience, but you then disenfranchise your secondary you audience, which cement. is very, very important in the next two but, or three but years. But don't a lot of Kenyans feel disenfranchised just like the people of Mombasa? Isn't that like a common thread that goes across the republic that people feel Absolutely. that they've been abandoned? But there's a way to do it uh -huh. instead of looking like, you know, How we're, 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 looking at, we're looking at, you know, like an emotional outburst this moment now. And, and that doesn't really appeal well to people. It worked well initially, but now I'm just saying he's a good politician, he has a great future, but he needs to change. Mm -hmm. Just change how you do your thing. This confrontation with the president when he's launching SGR and, and you know, I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely tired. tiring. It's yeah. tiring, Rajab. That's, tiring. That's, that's true, but you tiring. see... The message is passing across. That's the most important thing. Actually, yeah. actually, the bottom line is that whether it's tiring to the few of us who see beyond now, right now, to the common Wananchi who he's speaking to, it's working magic. So it, can, it will probably hurt him another 10 is, years will yeah. to come. But in 10 years, things will have changed so much. This country of ours with our short memory, people won't even remember this. Right now, in this space, he is not seeking for presidents. He is looking to be re-elected re governor. governor. And this and is working his, for him. In another, base. what right. he'll do between now and 2022 is different. All right, uh, speaking I, about... I wish them all the very best. <laughs> I wish him all the very best. I wish him all the My prayers are with him. All right, so yeah. on that prayerful note... Yeah. <laughs> President Uhuru Kenyatta maintains a narrowing lead on opposition leader Raila Odinga in the presidential race, overshadowed by concerns about the cost of living. This is according to an opinion poll by Ipsos. While Kenyatta has a high job rating, almost three quarters say the country is on the wrong track and their condition has gotten worse. Right, cost of living, the Unga revolution, um, unemployment, these are things that um, are, have always been a, a stumbling block uh, for the Jubilee narrative, because they claim that they've fulfilled 70% of their electoral promises. But as Kenyans, Kenyans can feel that their life has not really improved. Is this one of those situations where we should actually believe the opinion poll, or are we being taken around the garden path? That Ramadan, I'll start with you. I think opinion polls have already lost that trust mm -hmm. or faith. Irrespective of what they give or what they churn out, <laughs> personally, I can't believe in them. Mm -hmm. But realistically, when the Jubilee tells you they've achieved 70% of what they <laughs> promise to do, then uh, they are celebrating that uh, success just publicly on uh, the blogs and mm -hmm. the portal. But on the ground, there's nothing. <laughs> because everywhere you go in this country, they'll tell you life is more worse than it used to be. Whereas a government in place should make life of the common people more bearable and more, more easier. But, but some would argue the government has a capacity to measure um, its uh, achievements. So in, 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 in the eyes of the government and by its own assessment of its uh, successes and failures, it's been a massive success. You can only measure success by looking at the people you lead. Right. You can't measure it by sitting at state house and saying, <laughs> or employing few bloggers to say <laughs> they have achieved. No, the but if, if you have people should see the roads. Danny, people should see cheap food, <laughs> cheap, 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 well, cheap unga in the supermarket. Unga is 90 shillings. Yes, they should see They've, they've, they've tarmacked about 2,000 kilometers of Where roads. Where are these roads? They have, uh, the last mile project has, according to their figures, has, yes. has, has gone but quite far. 30, 32%, I think, or something like that, out of 70. But mm. they've done something. I think I really don't want to go to the direction of what have they done or did they promise. My main issue is the 70% mm -hmm. Kenyans who are actually saying that the country is heading in the wrong direction. While at the same time, ironically, saying that the person who's driving the country to the wrong direction is actually right deserves 
you know, a re-election. Mm -hmm. and, and it really brings out the mediocrity thinking the majority of us have. That we are so used to basic, bare minimums that when somebody just does do something small, then we are so wowed. You know, really, mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. while countries are moving forward and actually building infrastructure that are modern, people are thinking of going to Mars. Right now, people are thinking of how can we get internet from the lights and they are churning out patents year after year. We are launching World War II locomotives <laughs> and making it look like we're about to launch people to Mars. <laughs> Absolutely. Danish, you just defended the SGR. No, no, I have defended the SGR. Yes. I've defended the SGR, but I'm thinking the that the thinking, the thinking behind <laughs> us celebrating mediocrity is something that is So why are you celebrating painful. mediocrity? Because you said it's a good thing. I've you said our the money has been spent. Yeah. There's going to be an economic benefit, but that doesn't mean that Kenyans do not deserve an electric train, neither do we deserve to invest in research and development, neither do we deserve to invest in green energy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you why I'm pissed today. I read in the papers today that when President Kenyatta went to China, he signed a $2 billion deal for a port, uh, for a, a coal processing plant in Lamo. Mm. Coal is something that China is running away from. Countries that are progressive are running away from it. Yet, mm -hmm. we are a country that is only second to geothermal to, to Iceland. Mm -hmm. Why don't we invest in the fastest wind in Turkana? Why don't we invest in the solar power yet we have got? Solar 300 days a year, Houston. seven hours a day. Why are we thinking retrogressively like this? And if 70% of us are actually believing that this country is on the wrong track, we must also believe that there's somebody else who can actually lead us to the promised land. Mm -hmm. This idea that we must be stuck with the people who abuse us is something that I do not understand. My only problem with that is that the new people are the old people. We have seen them for years. They have run and they have this lost. This Okuro court, there are many people here who are actually brilliant. If why we, why, we, why are we confining ourselves to the two If people we are honest, only? looking at our political landscape, it's yeah. probably going to be a two-horse race. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Dr. Nelly, what are your thoughts on the opinion poll and the, the actual um, the, uh, the, the state of affairs in the country and how Kenyans are living today? Uh, I'd like to, to separate the two. Opinion poll in terms of who's leading and who's not, uh, I think this year we've had enough shocks. So where we're sitting right now, as he said, I take it with a pinch of salt and I really wouldn't comment much on it because everybody has various reasons for why they think they're voting for the person. I am yet to meet somebody who is truly convinced that the person they want to vote for is a person who's the best choice for this country. What everybody is saying is that, I mean, what has been the narrative now? It's been, let's have other thieves, you know, or whatever, whichever thief is there, you know, that, that's, that's a message. We're, yeah. I mean, we're talking about the people we want to lead us like that. Mm. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. And that problem is probably not going to end in this election. We probably are going to go through two, three elections before. And as I keep saying, we need to hit rock bottom for us to realize that we need to rise up and emotionally develop. I don't have to like you to vote for you. Mm -hmm. But if I think you're the person who can bring change to this country, I should have the emotional maturity to move past what we, how I feel about you, mm -hmm. to what is good for me. Because when it's good for the country, it's good for me. Mm -hmm. But when I go to the other side about where we're living, I agree with him completely. Mm -hmm. Education, health, food security, and, and security overall, mm. these four are not things you celebrate mm. completely. Mm -hmm. Those are basics. It's like in your house, you're, we were taught food, shelter, clothing, mm. everything else becomes a luxury. Yeah. We only are supposed to celebrate luxuries. Yeah. We haven't even fulfilled our basic needs. And if we're going to sit here and celebrate, you know, gains because we're talking about basic needs, at this point, and we're calling ourselves a middle-level economy, mm -hmm. there's a problem. You know? Absolutely. Right, it's okay. like a father dropping the daughter to school and saying, wah, let the press come. Sorry, Danish, I'm going to have yeah. to cut you short. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue with this after the break. because. Uh, <laughs> but before we do go to break, today we're asking you, do opinion polls help or hurt, hurt the politics in this country? Our Twitter poll is, do opinion polls help or hurt the politics in this country? You can tweet me at Julie Masiga, at KTN News. Of course, the hashtag is News Sources. Don't go too far. We'll be back right after the break.